everyone, it's your girl Rihanna back with another video. From the title of this video, you guys can tell that I am going to be doing a Q&A today. I've been wanting to do one for so long just so you guys can get to know me better. And I just want to help you guys with anything you need. And thank you guys for leaving questions for me. I have received more questions than I ever thought I would. So thank you. Without further ado, let's get into the Q&A. Okay, so the first question is, how old were you when you started? So I started ballet at the age of four. Um, I was really obsessed with Angelina Ballerina and years ago my brother was in Taekwondo and my mom actually made a friend with another mom there and she said that her daughter was taking ballet at a place called Virginia Ballet Company and she was like you could, you should take your daughter over there maybe she'll like it and little did my mom know that Virginia Ballet Company would be the place that would become my second home and I would be dancing there from age 4 to 18. Do I have a dream company? Yes of course I do. My ultimate ultimate like dream company is American Ballet Theater. Oh my gosh you guys know I went to their summer intensive in 2019 and I just love how diverse the dancers are. I love how it's in New York which is my dream city to live in. I look up to so many of the principals there. Skylar Branch she just got promoted this year. Um, Jillian Murphy, Devin Tushir, Isabella Boylston, he's so, um, Misty Copeland. Yeah I just love how diverse and inclusive ABT is. Um, I just they've shown their support for the LGBTQ community and Black Lives Matter and that is just some of the things I stand for and I love that about them. What is the difference between a company trainee and a company ballet core member? My position as a company trainee, I'm in between being a student and being a professional. Um, I do not get paid. <laughs> I'm currently paying tuition to ballet met. But the trainee program is basically a way for people who graduated high school or are close to graduating high school to continue their training after um, they've graduated so they can get hired into a professional company. A core member is someone who's already been hired into a company, they have a company contract and they get paid and that's what basically us as trainees are striving to get our core contract, our apprenticeship contract. Is Balanchine super different from Vaganova? So I am classically Vaganova trained. I did not go to the actual Vaganova school but I was trained in the style but now that I'm at Ballet Met I've started to learn the Balanchine technique so I've had to transition from a classical Russian ballet to Balanchine technique. So I think the biggest difference between Vaganova and Balanchine is just the style. The technique is pretty much the same. There's still, there's a couple differences that I've had to correct, but mostly it's like the, the port de bras and the upper body is very different. So I was talking to one of my best friends, Mark, about this, and he is currently at the School of American Ballet, which is like the best ballet school in the country. Mark is like amazing. <laughs> but before he went to SAB, he went to my studio, so he was also Vaganova trained and he was telling me that it's easier to go from Vaganova to Balanchine than going from Balanchine to Vaganova because if you go from Vaganova to Balanchine the technique is already there you already have the technique but all you really have to change is like your upper body and your port de bras but when you go from Balanchine to Vaganova it will be quite tough to learn the Vaganova technique. The Vaganova technique is very strict. It's easier for me now and it's in my muscle memory just because I've been training in it since I was very little. But if you've been trained your Balanchine technique your entire life and then you hop into Russian ballet class, it is quite different. You will have to change more than just your port de bras and upper body. It also has to be your technique. So I hope that made sense. But I'm very thankful that I was trained in Vaganova first and Balanchine second because I already had that foundation of technique and the balancing technique really brought out more of my artistry. What is your proudest moment so far in your lifetime of dancing? I think my proudest moment right now would be getting a ballet met trainee contract and coming back after surgery. Many dancers are not able to dance after high school because they're just not accepted into programs like this. Even auditioning for a dance program at a college there are very limited spots. I'm very grateful to have been accepted to the University of Arizona School of Dance and I think I was one out of 20 or 30 people and there's like millions of dancers across the country. So getting a trainee contract with a company, that has to be one of my proudest moments ever so far. <laughs> and then also, you guys know I got surgery and there were so many times where like I wanted to give up and I was like maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't keep dancing but 
I got back up on my feet after only three and a half weeks I came back to the dance studio and then I took class with my home studio until my training program started in the fall and now I'm dancing full time 30 hours a week. What is your favorite performance memory? I could probably make this into a whole story time but my senior year nutcracker was so so hectic. My partner who his name is Shadi Muhammad he's a really good friend of mine he got the flu the night before we were supposed to perform the Grand Pas de Deux and Sugar Plum and our last show but somehow Shadi pulled through we were able to do Grand Pas de Deux together he was not feeling well at all but he killed it he actually changed some of our like lifts so in our original choreography of the Nutcracker Grand Pas de Deux um, I'm supposed to be doing a flying fish into him, so I run, jump, and he catches me. And we changed that because he's he was probably going to collapse if I did that. So instead he was like, why don't we do a press lift? I have had the flu before, and it, it is it feels absolutely awful. I feel like I'm dying, and he decides to change it into a press lift because that is better. <laughs> and I remember asking him, I was like, are you sure, like, is this a good idea? He was like, this this will f honestly feel better for me. And along with that, I was also injured. As you guys know, I had Ostrigonum syndrome. I'm also dealing with it now in my other foot. The adrenaline really helped. I wasn't really in pain on stage, but before then I had to take two weeks off um, so I could be able to perform so I wasn't in my best shape. During the party scene, my dad even got to perform with me and we got to be parents together. We got to do the little parent dance together. And also a fun thing that we did as advanced girls since we were all moms during the party scene of Nutcracker, we all gave ourselves names. And it was just a fun thing for us to do to like help the acting and to help like the Nutcracker like come to life. So my name was Maria with two eyes. My character, Maria, she was the drunk mom. <laughs> so the entire party scene, I acted like I took way too many shots. And I was, during the parent dance, I was like wobbling. And like, uh, when I was walking out of the party scene, I like tripped. And like, you could just, if you watched me in the background, uh, it was just so funny. And then throughout the entire season of the Nutcracker rehearsal season, my Russian teacher would always yell at us girls, the advanced girls, because we were all parents in the party scene and we were all too shy to like um, talk to the guys and like act with them on stage. So she would always yell at us and be like, go, like go be flirtatious. And she kept joking that she would be the grandmother in the Nutcracker. My studio doesn't traditionally have a grandmother in our production of the Nutcracker. We're all on stage for the party scene. The curtain is up, all the kids are running around and dancing. We're all having a good time acting and enjoying our time on stage for the last show of Nutcracker. Then all of a sudden my Russian teacher comes on stage dressed in grandmother makeup and then we're all so shocked because we weren't expecting her to actually do it. So we all looked at each other like... <laughs> and then we had to improv act or else it would have been awkward on stage. So we were all like, hello, hello. It was so much fun. And they even joined the parent dance. This question is from Jillian Carr, one of my girls at Ballet Met. <laughs> Love you, girl. She asked, who are your biggest inspirations in the ballet slash dance world? I am so obsessed with Angelica Generosa from PNB. She is Filipina, just like me. And I feel like there are not that many Filipinos in the dance world. Along with Angelica, I look up to Stella Abrera. She is also another Filipina and she was with American Ballet Theater, but she retired this past year and I wish I could have seen her at her final performance, but it was canceled. Seeing these Filipina principal dancers, it really inspired me because they looked like me and there is not that much Filipina representation in the ballet world. So seeing them like live out their dreams, that really showed me that I can do it too. This person asked, what is some advice for dancers who now have to go back into quarantine and feels like it will be forever until we get back? I totally feel you guys on this. I went into quarantine in March and then I wasn't able to go back to my studio until July. Um, I know some people until now have not even gone back to their dance studios and I'm so sorry for that. Um, I'm very grateful that I was able to go back. My advice if you're still in quarantine or you're going back to quarantine, 
I would say work on your basics. Since you don't have that much space, you can't do ground allegro or anything like that. Use this time to work your basic technique at your bar. I would love to teach my own ballet class one day, but I've never done it before, so I'm really nervous. But Catherine Morgan has so many amazing ballet bars on YouTube. So yeah, use this time to work on your basics so when you come back to ballet, you have a really good foundation of technique and you can come back even stronger. Have you ever dealt with insecurities about your body image from dance? If so, do you have any advice on how to overcome those insecurities? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> body image is actually a thing I'm pretty passionate about, but I just haven't really spoken about it on my YouTube channel. I would love to make a separate video about this so I can really go deeply into this topic, but yes, I have so many insecurities. <laughs> I used to be kind of overweight back in middle school. I was 130 pounds, and I'm five feet by the way, so that was considered kind of like little on the heavier side for my height and i had this notion that once i lost the weight i would finally be happy i would no longer have any more problems no <laughs> not at all once i lost the weight people were telling me i was a twig and that i looked anorexic so then because of that insecurity i started weightlifting and then i gained a bunch of muscle and all of a sudden my thighs became my biggest insecurity and i still deal with that today and then i started wearing ballet skirts to cover up my insecurity but now i've realized maybe you shouldn't just cover up your insecurities and sweep them under a rug maybe you should face them and accept them. Maybe my thighs are big and muscular, but I can jump higher than the average female ballet dancer. Yeah, sometimes I might hate the way my thighs look, but they give me power and they give me my my gift of jumping, which is what I'm known for. That's how I kind of get over that insecurity. I just think of what they do for me, you know? And like I said earlier, my weight was one of my biggest insecurities and I thought once I lose the weight, I will be happier, but no, I wasn't. So you should just love your body at every stage, no matter what you look like. You were given this gift of a body and this life, and you should love it no matter what shape or size it is. Okay, to come from that really deep topic, let's go on to a more lighthearted topic. So my funniest slash my most embarrassing dance experience. <laughs> I've had many. I was in pot and duck class, and Mark was my partner. And I was doing the combination, and I was doing a very slow, beautiful devil pay to the side. And once I reached the climax, and my leg was fully sent to the side, for some reason, I lost any control of my booty hole. And I farted really loud. And the entire room heard it, and Everyone kind of paused and looked over to our side and Mark and I, we were laughing so hard and we didn't want to like stop and laugh because we were going to get in trouble so we kept trying to keep going <laughs> and we were laughing so hard to the point where I could barely move, barely dance correctly and Mark was laughing so hard to the point where he peed himself in his black tights good thing they were black <laughs> oh my gosh, we're so... Never put Mark and I in a dance class together ever again because <laughs> the funniest shit happens. The next question is, I'm a dancer, I want to start a YouTube channel, but I'm scared that people won't like it. Girl, I was in your exact same shoes, but if it weren't for quarantine and my boredom, I would have never started this YouTube channel and now look where I am. I had been wanting to start a YouTube channel like this since middle school was so that's it's been like six or seven years in the making and finally my senior year of high school i decided to turn on the damn camera and film my first video what i would say is that you can't let fear control your life i was afraid to start this youtube channel i was afraid to audition for ballet companies i was afraid to audition for prestigious summer intensive programs and audition for dance colleges. I was afraid to do all of those things. And now look where I am. I'm at 2,500 subscribers. Thank you all so much for subscribing to me, by the way. I got into ABT Summer Intensive and the Washington Ballet Summer Intensive. I got a trainee contract with Ballet Met. I was so afraid of failure, but I didn't let that control me anymore and I, did, I went ahead and did it and now look where I am. And even if you do fail, at least you don't die thinking, what if? So yeah, that is one of the biggest things that I live by. You don't know if you never try. Um, I have a couple questions about flexibility. So this person asks, 
any tips for higher extension slash tilts, mainly for hip mobility and flexibility. And this person asks, advice on gaining flexibility back from quarantine and just dancing in general. So I've mentioned this to you guys before, but one of my strengths in ballet is my extensions. Uh, not on the left side though, but on the right side, I got you. I was not born with very flexible legs. All of that flexibility was just hard work and pushing through pain. If you really want to gain flexibility fast, you have to stretch in addition to your dance training and stretch every day. So I remember when I was really trying to um, gain my flexibility, every day after I came home from dance, I would stretch and I would do Catherine Morgan stretching routine. I used to do over splits, but I don't really recommend those anymore. Now that I'm 18 and I've kind of, my bones have kind of matured a little bit, um, my hips are kind of messed up. I blame that on me putting my leg on a chair and like doing some crazy over splits. Um, really, now I just do just regular splits on the floor. And to be able to gain flexibility fast, you have to be able to hold that position for 30 seconds to a minute. Let's say for getting your splits, no matter how high above you're hovering the ground from your splits hold it no matter what for 30 seconds to a minute and you'll find that the next day you'll get lower and lower and lower I remember I was really struggling to get my middle splits I was following Olivia DeAndrea's uh, middle split routine and she made you hold that shit for like 30 seconds to a minute but that really helped I don't really recommend people standing on you or holding your splits for like an hour or something like that. Just let gravity do the work. No matter how bad it hurts, make sure it's a good hurt. Um, stay in that position because that's how you're gonna gain your flexibility. I would love to make a stretching routine video, but honestly, I just do Catherine Morgan's stretching routine. I can link it up in the card above. The stretching routine that's really worked for me for a long time, and I wouldn't want to make another video on it because it's literally just the same thing she does. And then I also love doing the stretch where I take my legs side and then I kind of demi rond it in my foot and then as I go back so that I can pull it into a needle. That has really helped my grand rond de jambes. Um, but please be safe with that stretch. Um, it did really hurt when I first did it, but and make sure you don't tear a muscle or anything. And then to gain strength for extensions, I really recommend, um, like I said earlier, just stretching your leg up and then let go and hold it as high as you can in the proper placement for as long as you can. Uh, maybe like 30 seconds to a minute again. Um, so you can build strength because extensions are not all about um, flexibility. You have to have the strength to hold it there because you may be able to whack your head, but can you hold it there? So strength and flexibility equal very nice extensions. Next question is from my good friend Vince. Hey King! He said, not a question, but I miss you and I hope you feature this in your video and I will. And he also asked, what's your favorite ballet? My favorite ballet is Don Quixote. Um, my dream role is Keytree. Her character is very like spunky and fiery and fierce. And I feel like that is me. Like a lot of people say like I'm a powerhouse. I feel like Keytree would definitely be a role that I could kill and I rolled that I would love doing. So these two questions kind of go together. So this person asked, how many hours do you train per week? And the next person asked, what classes do you take at Ballet Met? So I dance about 30 plus hours per week. We dance six hours a day for five days of the week, Monday through Friday, and then we have an hour technique class on Saturday. The rest of Saturday is meant for rehearsals, but because of COVID, we don't have any shows to rehearse for. So probably when rehearsals kick back up, it'll probably be like 40 or 50 hours. Our classes at Ballet Met, so we start off each day with a technique class that's an hour and a half. And then the next hour would probably be either a point class or a variations class. And then we have a 30 to 45 minute lunch break. And then after lunch, sometimes we have a variations class or we have a rehearsal for whatever ballet we're doing. So right now we're doing Sleeping Beauty and Walt Perkishnot, which is a balancing ballet. So much fun, I love it. The last hour and a half of the day is another rehearsal for Sleeping Beauty. Oh yeah, and then I forgot to mention our last class of the day on Wednesdays and Fridays is an hour and a half of Modern. So yeah, my day starts around 9 or 9.30 and then it ends around 3 or 3.45. How do you deal with periods when dancing? It is so hard to deal with your period as a ballet dancer because all you wear is tights and a leotard and that's it. Sometimes a skirt, but that can't really cover enough, you know? So yeah, I could totally make a separate video on this if you want, but I can just give you some of my quick tips now. If your studio allows it, definitely wear black over tights. Black tights really give me peace of mind knowing that if an accident happens, nobody can see it. But I know not every studio allows black tights. My home studio did, but now 
now since moving to Bella and Met, they don't allow wearing black tights on a daily basis. Wear a skirt if you can. Um, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind knowing that you have some coverage. Change your tampon or pad right before class begins because if you change it right before class, you will have less likely of a chance of an accident happening. I personally get really bad cramps when I'm on my period. As you guys saw in my Christmas vlog, I literally almost threw up during Christmas mass because I was on my period and I was feeling really nauseous. Definitely take Tylenol or Advil, some kind of painkiller. And if you feel really sick at dance, just go ahead and tell your teacher if they are a person with a vagina they will understand. <laughs> and a period is something you shouldn't be embarrassed about. The majority of dancers are women. Everyone understands what you're going through. I can't tell you how many times I've bled through my leotard and tights, but whenever it happened and I didn't notice, my friends would tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, you leaked. You should go check it out. People will have your backs. It is a natural thing. Don't be embarrassed about it. We're all going through it. <laughs> This question is from my girl Kayla. Hey girl, I miss you so much. But she asked, do you have any backup plans besides being a trainee or any helpful backup plans? So right now I'm in training to get a company contract, right? And I'm auditioning for ballet companies. So if it ends up not getting hired this year, which is the most likely situation because of our pandemic right now. I wouldn't mind spending a second year as a trainee at Ballet Met. I wouldn't really mind spending a third year at Ballet Met, but by the time I'll be 20 or 21 and for me that is time for me to move on. If I don't end up getting hired into a ballet company, I would love to go to college and get a degree in nursing. Of course, it's in Filipino blood. Both of my parents are registered nurses and my brother is currently in nursing school, but I'm not doing it because it's in my blood. I genuinely have an interest in the medical field and in biology. Science was my favorite subject when I was in high school. Um, so yeah, that is my backup plan to go to college and become a nurse. Tips for company auditions. Girl, I, I need some tips myself. I'm not even in a company yet, but I can give you tips based on my experience from company auditions. I went into audition season thinking I had to look professional by wearing a black leotard and pink tights. But really, that made me look like a student because when I walked in there, I realized there were people much, much older than me. They were wearing like the whole shebang. They all looked like professionals. They were wearing colored leotards and black stirrup tights and cutoff tights. You know, they looked like professional dancers. And I looked like a very young, scared student. <laughs> and dressing as a professional dancer really helps the judges like picture you and their company and just take you more seriously, you know? Does your family support your passion? Hell yeah, they do, and I'm very, very thankful for that. They are the ones who pay for my tuition at Ballet Met, they pay for my apartment, and I'm very grateful that they are able to do that for me and that they are willing to do that for me. When I first told my parents I didn't want to go to college and I wanted to go into a ballet company, they weren't fully on board with it. They grew up in the Philippines and what they were taught was that education would lead them to a successful life. So they weren't fully on board when I told them that I wanted to dance. I remember I would have conversations with them and I would come out crying because they would say dance is not a real career. And I do understand where they're coming from that like the world of the arts is very unstable. You won't really make enough money. But one day they realized that ballet was something that I truly loved and wanted to do for the rest of my life. I remember they took me out to Bob Evans one day and it was just me, my dad and my mom. And my dad looked at me and he was like, so we're going to let you dance and we're gonna let you follow your dreams. And that meant everything to me. Um, so yes, I'm very thankful to have parents that support me in everything I do. How do you stay determined to do dance even when you are hurting or having a bad day? <sighs> yes, yes, I have faced this a lot. So there are so many days where I come out of class and I'm like, damn, like, I dance like shit. Why am I doing this to myself? Like, I'm tired, I'm hurting. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. But then I think back to my four-year-old self who just loved ballet so much and just that, that childhood joy of ballet and just remembering why I started ballet and it's because I love it and I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. I think back to that time in my freshman year of high school where I actually quit ballet for like four months because I just was feeling really burnt out and I needed a break and that made me realize how much 
I love ballet and how much I needed it in my life. And after that break, I came back to ballet and I never looked back and I've been dancing ever since. Also, when I'm having a bad dance day, I just think about how grateful I am to be dancing in a studio, especially right now. I remember how terrible it felt to be doing Zoom at home. I feel like I shouldn't take any day I have in the studio for granted. So I just keep thinking about that. So the last question we're going to answer for today is, what would you tell your younger self about dance? Girl, you need to have more confidence. <laughs> I still struggle with confidence today, but it was especially worse when I was younger. I always talked negatively to myself and I always said like, oh, I suck at dancing, like I'm not good enough, like stuff like that. And that's just really not good for your mental health. Um, it's not gonna make you feel any better if you talk to yourself that way. I learned you need to speak kindly to yourself and you need to be more confident in your dancing. I think part of it was because I was afraid to come off as cocky, but there's a difference between cocky and confident. When you're confident, you know what you're capable of, but you don't go around parading it to everyone and you don't shove yourself to the front of the class. You just stay in your lane, but you're not afraid to show yourself, you know? Especially in auditions, they will not see you if you are hiding in the back of the room, scared to like put yourself in the front, but then they will also not want to work with you if you're like shoving yourself to the front and like, being the star and the diva, you know? They will want to work with a person who is confident and who knows what they're capable of, but they're also kind and humble and an artist. Whew, that was a lot of talking, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little more about me, and I hope you enjoyed my mediocre advice. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Hit the like button if you want to support me. Leave a comment down below because I love talking to you guys, and I'll see you all later. I need more sleep. So don't test me. I don't want things to get messy. Yeah, drop down a little SMT. Yeah, like I just want to hit delete. Come and test me. Hit you with that smite.